shift to first gear twice. Shift to second five times. Third gear six times. Minimum of 17 gear changes every three and one half minutes, with constantly changing engine speeds ranging from 2,600 to 6,000 revolutions per minute, and repeat over and over for hours without stopping. Le Mans, France? No, not exactly. The sounds you have been hearing come from this building, the Ford Motor Company's dynamometer laboratory. Test cell 17D without car or driver, with no cheers or ceremony, the 1966 Le Mans race has already run six months before it actually happens. This is Le Mans, France, where one of the toughest and most grueling contests for man and machine is made even more demanding by the intense flavor of international competition. Cars run in a clockwise direction. The 8.3 mile asphalt surface track consists of a smooth right turn, which is taken at about 162 miles per hour, and then goes into a short straightaway, leading into a tricky S pattern that requires slowing down to about 100. From here, the route passes under one of the picturesque Dunlop bridges, which is taken at between 85 to 90 miles per hour. Here, the track is essentially a straightaway for over three miles. The GTs run up to 210 miles per hour before gradually breaking down to 54 miles per hour with a right turn into a fairly straight run at speeds of up to 157. Then into the sharp left curve with a fast downshift from fourth to second to bring the speed down to 65 miles per hour. Then down the short straightaway at 80 and into a sharp 90 degree right turn at 35. This leads into the home stretch at speeds of 157 up to 195 in front of the pit area. Average lap speeds in excess of 121 miles per hour are required to finish up front with the winners. With an average of over 50 starters, usually less than half of the entries finish the classic 24-hour endurance race. By means of special instrumentation, engine speeds and shift patterns were recorded on an oscillograph mounted in a vehicle. This was done to obtain a precise record of what the engine and transaxle had to do during a typical lap at Le Mans. Data from the trace is translated to form the basis for calibrating the master control. The control then simulates the driving pattern in our laboratory by transmitting or relaying timed signals in the proper sequence to three separate locations. Here the signal activates the throttle to provide either acceleration or deceleration. Another signal sets the clutch in proper position. The third signal goes to the shift tray, which is a series of pressure regulators and solenoid valves that combine to match the proper combination chosen by the relay in this manner.
The test engine is set up to duplicate the as-installed condition as closely as possible. The Ford transmission has had numerous design refinements and has been modified and repackaged to fit the GT car. The axle utilizes a locking differential. And the entire unit is designed to sustain the higher torque loads required by this type of competition. Two dynamometers are calibrated and regulated to impose loads which simulate the rolling resistance, weight, wind drag, and inertia of the vehicle. This test imposes conditions more severe than the actual race. Through a careful recording of pertinent data, a complete record is obtained of all critical temperature and speed conditions in the engine, transmission, and rear axle. Although the final measure of success is dependent on actual performance in France, this attention to detail and pre-race testing will contribute significantly to a successful engine performance. What you have just seen is typical of the extensive application of program simulation equipment in our dynamometer laboratory at the Ford Engineering Center. Here an engine is being driven over a 25-mile city and country route for many hours without leaving the test cell. Transmissions repeat a strenuous cycle of programmed shift patterns for hundreds of hours. Control testing under carefully planned conditions provides an invaluable supplement to proving ground and highway testing. This background of thorough testing assures our customers the maximum of safety, durability, and performance in the design of our products. From the very start, the 24-hour endurance race at Le Mans in France tries and tests the total performance of every car entered. Shifting up and down in this day and night test of automobile design, construction, and performance, the Ford GT Mark II was ahead all the way. And the Mark IIs came home. Record-breaking, record-making. In a one, two, three Ford victory. The first American car ever to win this rugged race. And now this Ford total performance car is headed your way.